I'm Calvin Corzine, and I'm at the Aloe Flagship Store in Beverly Hills. Today's class is going to be a 45-minute Power Vinyasa flow class. It's going to be pretty well-rounded, a lot of kind of core work to get you to build some heat in this short 45-minute format. And we'll kind of move around and do every part of the body, basically. So hopefully that works for you. And make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have a ton of new content that we pump out all the time. And let's hop into it. Go ahead and start out on your back, and we're gonna start in a spinal twist. So lay down on your back, and scoot your left hip in a little bit towards the center of the mat, drop your knees over to the left, and open your chest to the right. You can reach the right arm out to the side. If you practice Ujjayi breathing, start to breathe in and out of the nose, and as you do that, breathe across the back of the throat, and start to fire that up. And see if you can feel like your outer right hip kind of lengthens forward towards the front edge of the mat, so you create a little bit extra length in the side body as you turn your shoulders and chest to the right. The legs are moving to the left. Then you just take a couple of breaths here. And now from here, go ahead and take your hands behind your head. Elbows nice and wide. And on your exhale, lift your head and shoulders up. And then lower down. Exhale, lift up and lower, up, and down, two more times, lift, and lower, lift up, and lower, and then come back to the center, take your knees over to the right as you scoot the right hip in, and open your chest to the left for your spinal twist. Again, see if you can feel like that outer left hip lengthens forward, so create a little extra length in the side body, maybe allowing your chest to turn a little more, as we just work to create a little bit of space early on. And see if you can feel like your left knee is moving away from your left shoulder. So the leg and the upper body move in opposite directions as you create that little bit of space towards the midsection, low back, mid back area. Try to hug the thighs towards each other a little bit to remind yourself to keep the legs active. And then take your hands behind your head, elbows wide. On your exhale, lift the head and shoulders up and lower. Lift up. And lower, up, down two more times. Lift, and lower, lift up, and lower down. Now come on back to the center. And take your legs into a tabletop position. So the knees are above the hips. Have your feet at about the height of your knees. And lift the head and shoulders up. Now from here, extend your left leg out, twist to the right. Try to keep your right shoulder off the floor. And then bring the left knee in, come back to the center, extend your right leg out, and twist to the left. Try to keep the left shoulder off the floor. And this time, as you bring the chest back to the center, extend your left leg out to meet your right. Reach through the toes, lift your chest a little higher. Bend your right knee, twist to the right. Come back to the center, both legs extended out. Bend your left knee, twist to the left. Come back to the center, extend both legs out. Pause, reach your arms up to the ceiling. Lift your chest a little higher. Reach through the toes. And hug your knees into your chest. Rock up to seated and make your way into your first downward facing dog. So spread your fingers wide, have your hands about shoulder width apart. Feel free to start with a nice bend in the knees. So that way you can lift your hips a little higher from the hands. Firm the upper outer arm as you press the whole hand down and create a lot of length from the hand through the hip. And then you can slowly start to work to straighten the legs. And on your inhale, shift forward to plank, top of a push-up. Have your shoulders right over your hands. Reach your chest forward. Draw your belly in a little bit. Kind of take advantage of that early abdominal work as you reach the legs back and the chest forward. Press the whole hand down. And then just pull your hips back, down dog. Step your right foot all the way between your hands. Take your left hand down. You can put it on the mat. If you need a block, put it on a block. Reach your right arm up to the ceiling. Turn the chest. Draw your left shoulder back a little bit. And draw the right thigh in towards the midline slightly, as naturally it likes to kind of drop open. Reach through your left leg a whole lot. And one more breath. Take your right hand down. Reach your chest forward as you come up onto your fingertips. And then reach your arms alongside your body. 
Turn the biceps out and lift the chest just a little bit off the thigh. Reach back a whole lot through your left leg. So the left thigh lifts as you're lunging into the right leg. And that work of the left leg lets you kind of send the chest a little further forward. Now reach the hands back so the shoulders draw away from the ears slightly. And then take your hands to the floor. Put your left knee down. Scoot it back an inch or two. Keep your left hand on the floor. Let the right knee drop open as the foot turns open and just the outer edge of the foot holds contact with the mat and reach back for your left foot just to stretch the quad a little bit. Open your right shoulder towards the ceiling. Let the right knee drop open. And if it's a lot of pressure on your left kneecap, either put padding like a towel or a blanket under or just scoot the knee back so you're more on the bottom of the quad. And from here, start to release the foot. Start to turn your right foot forward. Curl your back toes under, reach that left leg back again. So the left thigh bone is lifting up. And then from here, walk your hands back about six or seven inches. If you're in a stiffer frame, you might need to put your hands on a block. You can always use a book or even like water bottles work as a good alternative to a block. And then straighten the right leg. First few breaths, keep the front of the foot down. Reach your chest forward. Stay on the ball of the back foot. If I turn the heel down, it tends to swivel the hips. I want your hips nice and even or parallel with the floor. And then for a few breaths, flex the heel. So you get into the hamstring a little bit more. All right, now bend into your right knee. Place the box to the side if you're using them. Step back, downward facing dog. Reach through your arms, reach through your legs. So feel like the arms and legs both work a whole lot here. Step your left foot forward. Right hand comes down, left arm reaches up. Draw the right shoulder away from your ear. Draw the left thigh in towards the midline a little bit. Reach back a whole lot through your right leg. See if you can feel like you lift weight out of the right arm by reaching higher through the left arm. And then take your hand down. Come up onto your fingertips and reach your chest forward. If you feel like you're balanced a little off, walk the left foot to the left a little. As you start to reach the chest forward, draw the navel in slightly. Really reach through the right leg and find a nice deep lunge in the left leg. Reach your arms alongside your body. Turn the biceps out so the palms face the floor. If you can't do that, palms face in. But try not to turn them up because we don't want the shoulders to round forward. Reach through the arms, lunge into the left leg, and get close to the thigh without resting on it. So torso moving forward, right leg moving back. And now slowly take your right hand down. Set the right knee down, scoot it back a little bit. Turn your left foot out halfway. Roll to the outer edge of the foot so the knee drops open. You get a little groin stretch and hip stretch mixed in. And then bend your right knee. Try to grab the outside of the foot so the thumb points up to the ceiling to help open the left shoulder towards the ceiling. Start to release the foot. Take your hands to blocks if you need them. Curl the back toes under. Get really strong with the right leg. So the heel reaches back, and it's almost like it reaches back from the midsection. The hands walk back a little bit. Straighten your left leg as you send the chest forward. Keep the front of the foot down for now. Feel like the inner thighs kind of draw towards each other a little bit. And then start to flex your left heel so you get into the back of the leg a little more. Same thing, inner thighs work towards each other. The chest lengthens forward. And then bend into your left knee. From here, step back to plank. And just lower all the way to your stomach. Once you get there, cup your fingertips, lift your chest up, cobra pose. Try to roll the shoulders back a little bit. Press into the tops of the feet a lot. 
And then while you're here, lift your feet off the floor, but instead of lifting them high, see how close you can stay to the floor without actually touching it, and reach back. Feel like you get a little bit of length out of the low back, and it makes you work the legs a lot more than just lifting them up. Now as you're here, start to hover your hands off the floor. Feel the muscles along the spine and back body fire up a little bit more. So right now your legs are working like crazy just to stay barely off the floor. The upper body's lifting, but you're supporting all that length with the muscles of the back body. Set your hands and feet down and come into upward facing dog. Lift your gaze, lift your chest, and pull your hips back down dog. And from here, walk your hands back to your feet. Feet about hip width apart. I personally like to hold the elbows and hang forward, so I'd say do that. If you like to interlace your fingers behind your back and reach your arms up and over, do that. Notice where the weight sits in your feet. If it's sitting in the heels, chances are you're locking the knees out. So if that's happening, shift your hips forward a little bit. Allow for the front of your foot to press down as much as the back of the foot. Let your head hang. Lower your arms down and roll up to standing. Once you stand up, step to the front of your mat, hands together, feet together. So now we'll start to get going with a couple sun salutes. So a few rounds of Surya Namaskar A. Hands to your heart, please. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Step or jump back, with or without a vinyasa to down dog. Reach through your arms, reach through your legs, and you take a couple breaths here. So these, these down dogs, especially in these sun salutes, when you're moving, the blood, rate, your, the blood starts to flow a little more, the heart rate rises, and the first thing we tend to forget about is our breathing. So use these down dogs or any of these kind of stationary poses to check back in with the pace of your breath. Breathe across the back of the throat, in and out of the nose, and then look forward, bend your knees, step or jump to the front of your mat. Inhale halfway and fold. All the way up on your inhale. If you have room, take your arms nice and wide. Hands together at your heart. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale halfway. Step or jump it back through your vinyasa. Let the heels turn out just a little bit so the inner heel is not visible to you as you gaze back. Reach through the fingertips. Feel the forearms lift. And then instead of pressing the knees back, press the thighs back, maybe the upper thigh, kind of where the thigh bone gets up towards the hip crease. Firm the upper arm so you feel the muscles below the armpit fire up a little bit. Bend your knees, look forward, step or jump. Inhale halfway and fold forward. All the way up on your inhale. Hands together at your heart. And one more round. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Halfway on your inhale. Down dog with or without a vinyasa. Now from downward facing dog, Plank on your forearms. From plank on your forearms, come onto the tops of your feet. Reach through the toes. Send your chest forward, draw the elbows in a little bit. Breathe. Use the legs a lot, send the chest forward, draw the navel in. Curl the toes under, one arm at a time, come up to plank, and just pull your hips back, down dog. Shift forward to plank, take your right knee to your chest. Keep your shoulders over your hands. From here, lower your right knee down, tap the mat, pull the knee in toward your body. Lower down and tap, pull it in. Lower down and tap, pull it in. Take your knee to your nose, step your foot all the way between your hands. 
Walk your right foot to the right a little bit. So your feet are like hip width apart now. Take your hands to your hips and lift your chest up. Firm the outer hips, so use the hands to help you do that. Bend your back knee. And with that back knee bent, the right leg will bend more. The pelvis will not tilt quite so much. So you can have a little more upright position in your torso. As you do that, arms up, straighten your left leg. If straightening the left leg disturbs the lower back, keep a bend in the knee. Reach the arms high and wrap the outer arms forward a lot. So you look for a lot of width across the back of the shoulders. Reach the arms up as an extension of the side body. Bend a little deeper and take your hands down to the floor. Put your back knee down, curl your toes under, and then reach your arms up. Hook your thumbs, have the biceps just in front of your cheekbones, lift through the forefingers and lean to the right. Draw the inner thighs towards each other, get a little side stretch. Come back to the center, look up, touch your palms, hands to the floor. Curl your back toes under. As you do, straighten the legs, step forward, cross your left ankle in front of your right. Bend the left knee, keep your right leg straight, both heels down, twist to the left and draw your right hip back. So feel the right hip draw back and in a little bit as you create this stretch to the side of the leg up through the outer hip. One more breath, and then come back to the center. Send your chest forward. Step your left foot back into a runner's lunge. Walk your right foot to the right a little bit. Turn the back heel down at a steep angle, and inhale, warrior one. For today, hook the thumbs. Lift the arms high. Bend deep in your right leg, and then straighten it. Turn your hips forward. Turn your chest forward. Lift higher through the arms. Fire up your left leg. Reach that left heel into the floor a lot and then bend nice and deep into the right knee, warrior one, maybe a little deeper, and straighten the leg again. Turn the chest forward, adjust, lift the side body, turn the palms to face each other, hands shoulder width. One more time, bend nice and deep into the right leg, look up, touch your palms, down dog, with or without a vinyasa. And then reach through your arms, reach through your legs. Shift forward to plank, take your left knee to your chest. Have your shoulders over your hands so the upper back widens. Keep the shoulders there, lower the left knee down, tap it lightly to the floor, draw it into the body. Lower the knee down, tap it and draw it in. Lower the knee down, tap it, draw it in. Take your knee to your nose and step forward. Walk the left foot to the left a little bit, it'll be easier to balance. Take your hands to your hips and lift your chest upright. Draw the navel in a little, lift the front of the pelvis, bend the back knee a lot. That'll let you bend deeper into the left knee. Firm the left hips, your left thigh bone tracks forward. And then start to reach the arms up, wrap the outer arms. And maybe the right leg straightens, maybe not. Really focus on the lift of the side body and the back body. So if reaching the arms up makes you stick the front body out a lot, you can start by taking the arms forward a little bit, that'll help you and or bending the back knee. And both those modifications are fine. Keep lunging in the left leg and you'll notice if you bend the back knee, it doesn't make this lunge any easier. Lift a little bit higher and then hands down. Put your right knee down, release the toes. Inhale, arms up. Hook your thumbs, pull them apart so you feel the back of the shoulders widen again. Lift high through the four fingers and then just start to lean to the left, get a nice little stretch across the front of the right leg. Draw the inner thighs towards each other. Try to stay long in the left side body and, and not collapse. And come back to the center. Look up, touch your palms, take your hands down. Curl the back toes under, reach the heel back, and then step forward, crossing your right ankle in front of your left. Twist to the right, 
Have a little bend in the right knee. Both heels stay down, left leg straight. Draw your left hip back. So try to keep both heels on the floor. Slow your breathing. And kind of hammer in that left hip moving back and in. So in our deeper lunges, in warrior one, the pose we're gonna do three times after this, we want that back hip to, or that left hip to firm back and in. So just kind of set it as muscle memory now as you create this stretch and get your little breather. Now start to walk your hands back to the center. Inhale halfway and step your right foot back. Walk the left foot to the left a little bit, turn the back heel down at a steep angle and then inhale up, warrior one. Hook the thumbs, pull them apart, lift high, lunge into your left leg, and then straighten the left leg. Work to turn the hips forward. They won't face all the way forward, but the chest can. So turn the chest forward, lift higher, lunge deep into the left leg, stay strong with the right leg, and then come back up. Again, adjust the torso forward, lift up, make the upper body work just as much as the lower body. Take your hands to face each other, hands shoulder width. Bend deep in the left leg, look up, touch your palms. Down dog, with or without a vinyasa. Now bend your knees, look forward, step or jump to the front of your mat. Inhale halfway, separate your feet hip width apart, hook your big toes, and then fold forward. Let your elbows bend. Inhale halfway, hands to your hips, and stand up. Step your feet together, and then stir your namaskar B. Hands together, feet together. Inhale, bend your knees, chair pose. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale halfway, step or jump it back through your vinyasa. From down dog, step your right foot forward, turn your left heel down. Inhale up, warrior one. Hands down through your vinyasa or straight to down dog. And then left foot forward, right heel down. Inhale up, warrior one. Hands down through your vinyasa or straight to down dog. Reach through your arms, reach through your legs. And just check back in with your breathing. Breathe deep, breathe slow. Look forward, bend your knees, step or jump. Inhale halfway and fold. Chair pose on the inhale. Stand up, hands to your heart. So one more round. Inhale, chair. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Step or jump it back through your vinyasa. Right foot steps forward. Left heel turns down. Inhale up, warrior one. Hands down through your vinyasa or straight to down dog. And then left foot steps forward, right heel down. Inhale up. Hands down through your vinyasa or straight to down dog. Take a few breaths. Make sure your whole hand is pressing down. Now from here, shift forward to plank. Take your right knee to your right tricep. Lift the knee really high. Plank pose. Take your left knee to your left tricep. Lift the knee really high. Plank pose. Pull your hips back. Bend your knees, look forward, step or jump through to seated. Lay on your back. 
So now that we've built a little bit of heat through the sun salutes, we're going to get a little more ab work, some outer hip, and some stretch stuff before we get back into standing poses. So for a few breaths, just take thread the needle. Cross the right ankle over the left knee. Reach the arms between the, right, between the legs, left arm around. Draw the legs in towards your body. So try not to round your back and lift the head and shoulders up. Keep the head and shoulders down. Draw the legs in towards the body. Now from here, lift your head and shoulders up. Hands behind your head. On your inhale, extend your legs out. Tap your heels to the floor. Exhale, bring the knees in. Touch the elbows to the foot and the knee of the right leg. Inhale, extend out, tap the left heel down. Exhale, bring the elbows to touch the foot and the knee of the right leg. Inhale, extend out. Exhale, elbows touch the knee and the foot. Now inhale, extend out, reach your arms forward. Lift your right leg up and to the right. Take your left foot out and to the left and pigeon toe your feet. So you'll feel that outer right hip fire up pretty quick. Reach your arms forward. Exhale, lift your head and shoulders a little bit and lower. Exhale up and lower. Exhale up. Take your legs together. Reach your arms up to the ceiling. Get the feet close to the floor. Lift your chest higher for three, two, one. Hug your knees into your chest. Cross your left ankle over your right knee. Thread the needle. Keep the head and shoulders down as you draw the legs in. Breathe. And check back in with the pace of your breath. Slow it down, smooth it out. Slowly start to lift the head and shoulders up. Let go of the right leg, hands behind the head. Bring the elbows to about shoulder width apart, more or less. Extend your legs out. Slowly tap the right heel down really lightly. And then curl back up into a ball. Touch the left ankle and the knee with both elbows. Extend the legs out and tap down. Bring the legs in. Touch the leg. El elbow to the ankle, elbow to the knee. Extend out and tap. Come back in. Touch them together. Extend out, pause, reach your arms forward, extend the left leg out, lift it up about a foot or so higher than the right. The left leg goes wide, the right foot goes wide, so the left foot is higher. You pigeon toe the feet to make the outer hips work a little more. Arms alongside, or arms alongside the front of the torso. Exhale, lift up and lower. Lift and lower, lift up and lower. Pause, feet together close to the floor. Arms up to the ceiling. Gaze up to the ceiling. Reach your arms back to the back of the room. Squeeze your belly in. And then circle your arms forward. On your exhale, come up to Navasana. Cross your legs. Down dog, with or without a vinyasa. From here, please step your right foot forward between your hands. Turn your back heel down. Right hand comes inside of the foot. Press your right arm into your leg. So let that happen and take a look at your right leg. Press into the leg and get the thigh bone to track forward, which might mean turning the back foot in more, drawing the right hip in. And as you turn your chest, keep that work in your legs and come up to warrior two. Reach your arms wide. Draw the navel in a little bit. Keep the weight in the right foot towards the heel and reach your arms a lot. So feel like the palms kind of press down a little bit as the arms reach. And the work of the arms is them moving apart instead of the shoulders holding them up. Pick one point to focus on and then breathe. If it doesn't feel good in the neck to look past the right hand, look to the side. That's totally fine. As you're lunging into the right leg, keep the weight in the heel, but press your left foot down a lot. Reach through your left arm a lot. and then straighten your right leg. Take the back foot in a couple inches. Keep the same angle of the feet. So the back foot is turned in. Triangle pose, trikonasana. So if you have a block, try to put your hand outside of the leg on the block. If not, use your hand on the leg, but try not to go inside. 
If your hand is on the leg, put a little bend in the knee so you don't lock out the leg from the weight of the arm. The right hand comes down, left arm reaches up. So draw your right hip back and in a little bit, similar to that IT stretch we did earlier, but press into the ball of the right foot. Now the leg is straight, so you're not so tempted to lock out the knee. Reach the left leg into the floor so that all the weight moving forward over the right leg doesn't take over the pose, but the legs work together to support your body weight. Reach through all four limbs, draw the navel in slightly, and breathe. With all that length in the right side of the torso, try to find a little more turn of the chest to the left, maybe just a little bit. One more breath, and then inhale up to standing. Step to the front of your mat, take your hands to your hips. So those two external poses are a lot of work on the outer hip to strengthen it. So now you just get a quick little stretch in. Cross your right ankle over your left knee and flex the heel. Make sure it's the ankle over the knee and not the side of the foot to sickle the foot. Reach your arms forward as if you're holding a block, really strong, like you're trying to touch the wall in front of you. As you get strong with the arms, bend your left knee, let the hips sit back. So you can get a nice intense little stretch across the outer right hip. Sink a little bit deeper, two breaths. And then stand up, hands together, feet together. Inhale, arms high. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Optional vinyasa, or you just step straight to down dog. From here, please step your left foot forward. Turn your right heel down. Take the left hand inside of the leg to start. You can have the right hand on the hip or to the ceiling, but look at your left leg. So notice if the hip is sticking out, the knee's buckling in, what's going on with the thigh bone? Get the thigh bone to track straight forward. So the pressure between the left arm and leg, they have to kind of work together to guide that left hip in. The back toes turning in can facilitate that a little better. And as you bend into your left leg, notice if the toes are gripping. Put the weight in the heel, it's a bent leg pose. And then inhale up, warrior two. Get your torso all the way up, turn the chest. Your shoulders are stacked above your hips. The tailbone directs down, the navel draws in a little bit so you're not sitting in the lower back. And sitting in the lower back will tend to stick the front hip out anyways. So firm that left hip, keep the thigh tracking, reach your arms wide. So at a lot of different points in all these classes, we reference the idea of moving en energy in both directions. Same thing with the arms, reach them apart. And that effort of the arms reaching apart will help you to stay broad, not only across the chest, but the upper back as well. Press the palms down a little bit. Keep reaching through the right arm. Even sink the crease of the right thigh a little bit as you bend slightly deeper in your left leg, keeping the heel heavy. And then you're not here for too much longer, so breathe. Stay in the pose. Don't worry about the small adjustments. Just be present. One more breath, and now straighten the left leg. Shift the weight to the front of the foot since it's a straight leg pose. Take the back foot in a few inches, but keep the foot turned in to help you keep the left hip firm. And then left hand comes down on the leg or outside of the leg. So the two actions of the left leg, weight in the ball of the foot, outer hip firming. Use those together. If you overdo one, the other one isn't really viable. So they have to work together to create stability in that left leg. And then as that left hip is firm, your right leg fires up. It becomes really important to kind of counter the, the energy of the torso moving forward. And then with the length of the left side body, the chest turns. Try not to be too heavy in the left arm. Let the shoulder move away from the ear a little bit. See if you can feel like all four limbs are working instead of just relying on one or two of them. So all of these poses become about the entire body. And then as you focus on your breathing, it's a little easier to create presence of mind. If you start to notice that you're nice and heavy in the left arm, reach higher through the right one. You notice everything leaning over the left leg, use the right leg more. A couple breaths. Inhale up. Step to the front of your mat. Cross your left ankle over your right knee. Flex the heel so the muscles around the knee engage a little more. 
Really try to touch whatever wall's in front of you. Reach forward and see if that lets you sit the hips down and back a little bit more. One more breath, sink a little more. Stand up, hands together, feet together. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Down dog, with or without a vinyasa. Shift forward to plank. Take your feet a little bit wider. And drop your heels to the right. Reach your chest forward. Draw your belly in a little bit. Lift your right foot an inch off the floor. Take your right knee, touch your left elbow. Extend the leg back, set it down. So the feet are still staggered. Lift your left foot an inch off the floor. Bring your left knee, touch your left elbow. Extend the leg back, set the foot down, back onto your toes. Drop your heels to the left. Lift your left foot an inch, it's really hard. Chest forward, draw the navel in. Bring your left knee, touch your right elbow. Extend the leg back, set it down. Bring your right knee, touch your right elbow. Try to stay on the outer edge of that left foot. Extend the leg back, set it down. Come back onto your toes. Take a breath, come straight into up dog. It should feel pretty good. Shift forward, chaturanga. Push up. Take your right knee to your chest. Extend the leg back, lower halfway. Push up, set your foot down. Lift your left foot, take your left knee to your chest. Extend your leg back, lower halfway. Push up, set the foot down, pull your hips back. Step your right foot forward, crescent pose. From here, hands to your heart, twist to the right. Firm the right hip, lift the chest high enough off the thigh, you're long in the torso, reach your left leg back a lot. Take a few breaths. And then take your hands down. Turn your back heel down, walk your hands to the left and turn your right foot in. Inhale halfway, center your left hand and reach your right arm up to the ceiling. Lift a little higher, and release it down. Walk your hands back to the front of the mat, down dog, with or without a vinyasa. Left foot forward, inhale up to crescent. Take your hands to your heart and twist to the left. Right elbow, left thigh, firm the hip, lengthen the torso, because the torso is moving forward as we turn, reach the right leg back more. Try to feel like you reach it back from the midsection, not just the heel. Take a few more breaths. Maybe lunge a little deeper. As much as you lunge into the left leg, the right leg reaches back, though. Those two actions work together. And hands down. Turn your back heel down. Walk your hands to the right. Parallel your feet. Inhale halfway. Center your right hand. Reach your left arm up. And set the hand down. Walk your hands to the front of your mat. Plank pose. Take a few breaths here. Bend your knees till they're an inch off the floor. Reach your chest forward. Squeeze your belly in. Straighten your legs, pull your hips back. Look way forward, bend your knees, step or jump through to seated. 
stay on your back. Feet flat, hip width apart. Couple bridge poses. And so with your feet flat, hip width apart, start to pick your hips up towards bridge. Draw the thighs towards each other a little. Direct the tailbone forward, lift the ribs behind the heart. If you have tighter shoulders, hold, hold the outer edges of the mat like so. If not, you can interlace your fingers behind your back and lift your chest. One more breath here, and then lower down. So we're gonna do two more of these. I'm gonna stick with bridge. If at home you practice Urdhvadhanyarasana or Ustrasana or another deeper back bend you prefer, you can do that instead. Round two, come back up into bridge. If you're doing one of those other back bends, focus on the legs. So keep the legs working. If you turn the feet out and splay the knees, it can cause compression in the lower back. The lower body is just as important in the upper body in these, in these back bends. And lower down. Take a breath or two. Try to feel long in the back body. And then one more time. Come on up. Get a little broader across the chest. And lower down. From here, drop your knees in towards each other. Take the feet a little wider. Take a few breaths. See if you can feel like the lower back widens a bit. And then start to lift your legs up to the ceiling. Cross your right ankle in front of your left. Take your hands behind your head. On your exhale, lift up as high as you can off the floor. Uncross your ankles so the feet are hip width apart. Lower your legs till they're almost at the floor. Lift them back up. Lift the hips up at the top. Cross your left ankle in front of your right. Lift your chest higher. Lift your hips higher. Uncross your ankles. Feet hip width apart. Lower the legs down. Lift your chest a little higher. Take your legs halfway up. Lower them back down. Take your legs halfway up. Lower them back down. Take your legs halfway up. Lower them back down. Pause. Flex your heels. Turn your feet to the right. Lift your chest higher. Turn your feet halfway to the left. Lift your chest higher. And turn your toes up. Point them forward. Lift your chest higher. Hug your knees into your chest. Rock on up to seated and extend your legs out in front of you. You can take Sukhasana or single pigeon for your hip stretch here. Sukhasana, you'll cross the legs at the center of the shin. We'll be here about a minute or so on each side and you fold forward. Those of you that practice single pigeon at home, you can take the left leg back as you come into your hip stretch. I'm gonna stay with Sukhasana for today. Those of you working Sukhasana, have the feet as wide as the knees. Scoot the hips back a little bit so it's not too much in the knees. If you want to put your forehead on a block at home, that totally works. And then for these last two stretches, ease your breathing. If you're still breathing across the back of the throat, steer away from it. Breathe smooth. And really just enjoy the stretch after all the hard work you did for the last 45 minutes. Start to come up out of this side and switch sides. So put the other leg in front, then single pigeon, switch to the other side. Those of you who feet as wide as the knees, scoot the hips back a little bit and fold. Stay active in the legs for either version. Smooth your breathing out.
and slowly come on up to seated. And so if you have the time at home, I would urge you to please press pause and just lay down for a couple minutes, close your eyes and rest. And if not, no worries. Thank you so much for tuning in.